ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it, and we're going to deliver. Sean Taylor's back. Hey, guess who's back? <laughs> it almost feels weird. There's not like clapping. I know. We should yeah. have like a studio audience. Um, Sean was on a trip. If you didn't know, he was in the states. He was globe trotting around the states. We're going to chat about that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Before us, how was it? Fantastic. Had a brilliant time. Did you conquer the women? Uh, we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out Tune later. Stay tuned in. <laughs> Clickbait that one. Clickbait that. Um, there was a card on last weekend and Chi- uh, China has their first UFC champion in Wei Li Zhang. We're going to chat about that. Habib Nurmagomedov fights this weekend. He fights Dustin Poirier in a much anticipated fight. I can't wait for it and we're going to break it down and give our predictions. And also, Habib says that he potentially will retire soon. He doesn't want to fight too much longer. How many fights will he have left? Do we like the move? Should he retire soon? Let's talk about it. UFC Fight Night Shenzhen uh, went down on the weekend. It was an early card. Um, and Wei Li Zhang became the first Chinese UFC champion with a 42-second destruction of Jessica Andraj. You watched the fight. Yep. Thoughts? Lots of thoughts, really. Mm. I knew fuck all about uh, Zhang before yeah. this, to be honest. Um, I thought it was a poor first defence for Andrade wow. I thought they were just uh, just because I knew nothing about it I was uneducated yeah. on it yeah. um, but it I seemed like to you it was like the UFC are trying to break into China yeah. so there's getting any kind of Chinese yeah. prospect and throwing them in there that's exactly how it seemed to me mm. the uneducated on it Yeah. Um, but she fucked her up <laughs> she, she did, fucked yeah. her up Um. yeah just so impressed at her man she just looks like a gangster mm. and Dana said afterwards he was like I'm struggling to match her Um. And generally, Dana talks a lot of crap, but and it's just kind of promoter speak. But mm. after that performance, you can well believe that he was struggling to match her. Yeah, so they won't have problems matching her now because yeah. she's the champ, and everybody will want to fight her. But yeah. um, yeah, I was like super impressed, and I was saying to you that I wish we'd done some kind of preview for this because like I was all over Zhang in this fight. Really? Yeah, because like I think she fights very much at times like Joanna, mm-hmm. and Joanna didn't do a similar thing to Andrade, but Joanna was a horrible matchup for Andrade. Mm. Um, and even when Andraj fought Rose, great win, great finish, taking nothing against that. But before the actual finish, the slam, I didn't think she was fighting that well. And I think if that fight went longer, I would have still fancied um, Nami Yunus in that fight. I really yeah. would have. I think she's more technical. And even the way Andraj came out, she came out and she was aggressive coming forward, which I think she had to do. And I didn't really listen to any kind of post-fight things on this. I but I assume that people are probably going to say... Oh, she fought a bad game plan. She, you know, she left herself too open. But I think she had to do that. Yeah, I think that's the game plan she had to do. Yeah. I just don't think she was good enough, at least on this night, mm. to to be Zhang. I mean, she came out swinging, and like the gaps were there. Yeah, and someone was going to get caught. Yeah, someone was getting caught, and it just happened to be Andrade. But yeah. um, Zhang looked badass. Yeah, so yeah. Look, Dana said her next fight's going to be in the US. Um, interested to see that. Going to have to go back and watch her old fights as well. Yeah, she also said about fixing some visas. I don't think her coaches have visas to fight. Oh, um, okay. to basically order to coach her in the US, which is you know a problem. And she yeah. said she wants them fixed first. Um, yeah. it's interesting to see what they'll do with her because she seems like she's a big deal in um China. I'm gonna get a tweet um now in a second mm-hmm. uh, to read out because I thought it was very interesting. But the, the Chinese really latch on to their sports superstars. You were saying this today, yeah. I said this earlier today, but um, there's this. I don't know if anyone here watches snooker. I, I do. do. I do. I do. Yeah. If you watch snooker, comment below. Uh, I I'd do. Be surprised. But there's a there's a snooker player called Ding Zhongwei, mm. and he was basically the first snooker player to break through the Chinese uh, system. And uh, he went proper mainstream, even in proper the UK. Mainstream. Proper <laughs> And uh, he's won a couple of big tournaments in the UK, but he is a superstar yeah. in the in China. Mm. The viewing figures for snooker are insane in China. It's, it's like amazing. treble, quadruple what it is in the UK. Obviously, yeah. bigger population, but like at Huge the end of the day, population. it's snooker like as well. One point three billion, almost one point four billion people in China. It's insane. Like. How fucking crazy is that? The if US if is three hundred twenty-five million. If you only catch a percentage of that market. It's a lot yeah, of no. money. That's why um, the Chinese market for movies now is absolutely enormous. Like, there's some movies now that come out in China that are Chinese movies that are cracking, like, the top 10 worldwide box office. That's insane. And, like, they're only watched in China. You don't get them anywhere else. So mm. that's how big that market is. This is what I was saying. Kevin Ioli on Twitter said, The first early impact of Zhang Weili's UFC title win. Top search on Beidou, which is the Google search mm-hmm. of China. Yep. Uh, top trending on Weibo, China's version of Twitter. Um, and then there was 300 million hashtags about her and the fight Damn. and 40 million views. It also made CCTV news. CCTV news is like some kind of Chinese news station. Sounds like uh, a Chinese watch over CCTV, people, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like voyeurism. Yeah. Um, 
but that's crazy. You can understand why the UFC are now pushing yeah. in there. They're uh, doing a institute, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they're doing PI. a performance institute. I believe in Shanghai. I'm open to be corrected on that one, but they are doing something over there. Yeah. Um, Even Sky Sports actually have recently paid big money for the rights to the Chinese Super League football. It's huge. So, yeah. It's like it's it's the market right yeah. now. And yeah. that's why uh, Donald Trump has problems with them. <laughs> um, we'll swiftly move on from that one. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Um, next fight. Who was it? Zaleski de Santos. Yeah, no, next fight for Zhang. Oh, sorry. <laughs> First title <laughs> fight. Totally <laughs> know, sorry, my no, bad. No, we're sticking on, yeah, uh, okay. on this for a second. Um, I don't know, it's tough. Mm. Um, I think Rose is probably going to have to fight again in the meantime to get a win. Yeah, I th- if they were going to do a rematch immediate, they could have done that, I think. They could have got away with it. But she's not coming back after a loss to fight Zhang, I don't think. Yeah, um, I don't know. Um, Ro- or Joanna's fighting Michelle Watson. Mm. That one. Maybe the winner of that. Do that one. And then, do, I mean, you could do the rematch between Rose and... Do you know what? I actually wouldn't have a problem seeing Rose have a rematch with Andrade because Rose was after going on a bit of a tear in that division where you don't see champions defend that uh, that much. Yeah. Um, Do the rematch between Rose and Andrade. Do Michelle and Joanna. Winner yeah. of Michelle and Joanna faces Zhang. And then yeah. the winner of that faces winner Rose and Andrade. Yeah. I like it. Um... The interesting thing about this fight, I thought, or the, the 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 result anyway, is that you have somebody, as you said, who kind of got rushed to the title fight. Like, she wasn't ranked, um, basically, in position to get this title fight. I think she was in R6 or something. Yeah, I think she was 6. So, there is plenty of girls above her she hasn't beat, she hasn't fought. Yeah. So, there's plenty of contenders there. So, if you look above her, you have Claudia Gadele, um, uh, Joanna, Nina Ansaroff, Tatiana Suarez, and Rose. So, I think Tatiana Suarez as well. Where's um, Michelle ranked? Michelle is ranked seven, so she's mm. just after. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. especially when you go above that, there's a lot of girls there who have fought each other, and there's not a lot of sense to be made of who's beat who and who's lost to who, as in it's very messed up, mm. um, whereas she's very new to that top five, six. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if Tatiana Suarez is, is matched. I don't think she is, so that could be the one they go she's for. coming off a loss as well, isn't she? Uh, Suarez, no, she's uh, coming off a win. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was thinking of Answer Megan off. Anderson. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Feminist Next fight uh, The next fight or <laughs> Yeah next fight <laughs> Zaleski Dos Santos Yeah uh, Zaleski against Dos uh, Dos Santos oh, no, Zaleski Dos Santos Against Jiling Li Fuck that Can up Can I try that again Jiling G <laughs> Jilian no. No, yeah. Go on Fucked it up Li 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 um, got a China again yeah. China in the co-main event Gets a win China didn't do Quite do the UFC Dublin Debut where everybody won not quite nah. but they almost got there one guy lost um, we definitely had a better party though yeah we did yeah, yeah it was a great crack um, but yeah good win very good fight I thought really entertaining yeah. fight um, Zaleski was on a tail people were some people were talking about him as in the ha- commentators weren't talking about yeah, him the hardcore were talking about him and mm. I seen a tweet saying uh, I think it might have been Sean Sheehan I'm not sure oh. um, someone said uh, Zaleski was going so under the radar people aren't even going to realise his 7 fight win streak is over mm-hmm. Um yeah yeah it's insane um, I didn't hear the commentator say that once see I'll be honest I wasn't actually listening to the commentary yeah. because I had football on as well on oh, the right. TV so priorities yeah uh, but uh, Zaleski had some big wins in there Curtis Melinder mm. when he was coming up that was a good win um, even like Max Griffin and Sean Strickland all good wins Lyman Good. he was on a tear solid names yeah solid names and yeah he goes in there Lee beats him big win for China and they just say eh Lee won yeah <laughs> pretty much uh, I think well, yeah. it says a lot about the thoughts on the card in general that yeah, that was the case as well. It's pretty much where I want to uh, stop talking yeah. about the card because I, d- I, I didn't watch any of the cards, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Um, I, that's it. We're such uh, we're so narky as well over here. As I in, know. We said as well, I said to you, that that's awful early for a card. Whereas yeah. we're, we're more comfortable staying up for a 3 a.m. main card. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like... Uh, we I just want to have our cake and eat it. I found it more difficult to watch the card live when it was on early. Mm. I was like, fuck's sake UFC I have stuff to do yeah, like what was the main card life 11am uh, yeah I didn't, no, I, main card yeah 11am I was jet lagged so I didn't get up till yeah, 1 o'clock yeah. so I just I about caught the, the co-main and main don't even know what I was doing but yeah. I wasn't watching the UFC yeah watched it afterwards so um, maybe this weekend we'll talk about that in a minute yeah. uh, that's an early card as well yeah. but you have to pay for it deadly well I ain't uh, paying for it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit me up if anyone wants to but no I'm sure a bar will be showing will they not in Ireland no uh, it's early uh, maybe I don't know or maybe one of the sports bars yeah. yeah never thought of that actually I might go crack 
I'm not get, drinking again. I might get all the lads with the round of mine of a few cans. <laughs> Watch on a dodgy yeah. stream. Don't know what you're talking about. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> oh, it's frozen. Uh, yeah. Great stuff. Let's move on because that card wasn't great. No. Um, as I get my news up. Uh, did you see BJ Penn? Uh, I didn't see him personally, but no, I've seen what's yeah, happening with him. Yeah. Yeah. He was in a few bar fights. Uh, you might be able to get some videos up there. There's yeah. a link on well, that these one the, Were the two fi- videos that went round, were they the same? I think it was the same guy. Same night as well? I think so. I okay. hope so. Yeah. Because mm. uh, I seen Luke ta- Luke talking about it. Yeah. He said it's ne- he said he'd done a bit of door walking. He said it's never good when someone comes back. Yeah. So then I assumed that it was just because I seen them within a week of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I assumed then it was the same night. I think so. Yeah. I'll try to find a video now. Um, so if you haven't seen it, BJ Penn, who is actually still scheduled to have a fight in the UFC, his last fight according to Dana White, he uh, got into a bar fight with somebody or a street fight and he was laying some fucking ground and pound on him. And then a second video came and it looks like it was the same guy and the guy actually knocked him out. So like this is absolutely serious. Um, and it's not something to joke about but the first thing that came to my mind was obviously you know fuck me that's BJ Penn an absolute legend of the sport getting into street fights with some randomer and then it was imagine being the guy who knocked out BJ Penn on the street well, I have the video of him getting knocked out here yeah. I'm going to put it on the screen yeah so uh, it's fucking sad man yeah. let me get it up so we can th- mm. the audience can see it yeah so he's getting up there. We're going to fill some air time. BJ Penn, absolute legend. Yeah, um, go on. Sorry, continue your thoughts. Yeah, so yeah just BJ. Uh, it's just sad because when I started watching the sport, BJ was on top of it. And now he is at the very bottom and he probably shouldn't be fighting again. So I don't know what the UFC are going to do here. If the UFC still allow him to fight, um, I'd, be, I'd, be that, qu- I'd be quite disappointed. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so here it is here. Look at it. So BJ's just walking through your man's shots anyway. Goes for single leg. BJ always had great single leg takedown defense, to be fair. Holy fuck. He got sparked. That is sad. Fuck, man. It didn't look an outrageously hard punch. No. BJ was just like, he obviously didn't respect the guy's power. He's like, you know, I'm a a former UFC champion. Yeah. But um, I think Luke Thomas's take on this, as you said, I think Pretty that was solid. Solid take. Um, TMZ had it as always. TMZ, they're fucking everywhere. Man. But I think t- uh, Luke Thomas's take on it was was correct. It's yeah. sad, and people are missing the point to s- if they say that you know the guy probably deserved it because he seemed like he was you know from all reports it seemed like he was the aggressor or whatever. But this is a a guy who was taking a lot of trauma, a lot of head trauma over the years, and now he's getting into bar fights and street fights constantly. Yeah. This isn't the first time. Mm-hmm. The first comment we got on the video when we put up on our Facebook page was, "Is this not old? I think I've seen it before." And mm-hmm. like, no, that yeah. was another There's street another fight. One. The thing is, as well, like, the UFC are enabling him to take head trauma at mm-hmm. this stage. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he's passing like commission tests. Yeah, and no, stuff. I don't care. Tests. Like, yeah. I, like, you're enabling him to A, do this mm. and A, if you're not punishing him for it, you're enabling him to do it and to just take more head drama. Mm. Um, like surely... And a terrible excuse as well. Sure. Then it was like, oh, he's just persistent. He just wants to fight. Come on. So what? <laughs> I want to fight. Like, dude in an octagon. Yeah. Um, if he... We've seen numerous stories of guy CTE and stuff. If something happens down the line, say him and he has CTE issues... He probably does, based on this. Can he not to the UFC for enabling mm. him to take more head trauma I'm just a bit I know, know I know what you mean um, I don't know you could have a big case like the NFL have had in the past yeah with it, no, probably yeah yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that got through there's probably a, 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 some grounds for it but um, it's just sad I hope that fight doesn't go ahead Nick Lentz um, came out talked a bit of smack as well today and uh, or that. yesterday yeah. Um, but yeah it's just sad and uh, yeah whatever fucking BJ Penn it is it's hard to watch yeah it's not great uh, Habib Namagomedov said that mm. he potentially will retire soon he says that he doesn't have too many fights left he doesn't want to fight when he's 40 is that a little dig to DC yeah. I don't, I think, don't so. think so yeah. I don't think so um, but yeah he says he's going to retire sooner rather than later he has a few fights left not too many what's your thoughts on that I love this yeah. um, I'm always a fan of sports stars going out early and at the top um, one uh, I thought someone who did it right was uh, Zinedine Zidane. Oh yeah! After he'd won three European Cups in a row, I loved Real, some guy Real Madrid. Chest. Yeah, and uh, and then he retired. Yeah, and I was like, "That's fucking it's brilliant!" Badass. Like out at the top, just you don't need to do that, and you've proven mm. everything. Mm. And then he came back. I was like, yeah. oh, "I'm just waiting for someone to do it right." And I'd love if it was Khabib. Thirty and all. Why right. do you think it's so rare? 
uh, ego and addic- they're just addicted to it, yeah. I think. Ego and they don't know what else to do when they're not doing what they were doing. Yeah. No, sense. no, 100%. Like, yeah. imagine like, imagine this podcast, right, mm. took off and it got huge, mm. like ginormous, like Joe Rogan size. Mm. And then we're on, like, episode 500. And we're still make we're still getting more views than ever. Revenue was fucking, fucking up out out the bleeding doors, and then <laughs> we were like, rocking. "It's a good time to end it." Yeah, it'd be tough, wouldn't it? And and we're just I talking think that's about a different example. No, but it would. Though, when you think about it like this, like I'm at the top of the game, yeah. and I'm gonna end it because I don't want it to dip. Yeah. No, but yeah. obviously this is different because because it's taking punches yeah. in the head. I think um I think to get it right, you have to go out early, earlier than you yeah. possibly should. To yeah, get it yeah, right, yeah I agree. Do. I agree. There's no like. If, if the line goes like this mm. you probably have to go out here rather yeah. than here there's no here in my opinion yeah GSP has probably done it if he stays retired yeah yeah if I think Alex Ferguson got it right as well yeah. with Man United yeah, um, yeah. and he's soccer football, football fans will know yeah, that yeah. Um, I think Khabib 30 no would be perfect yeah. Khabib says nah I'm done unless he loses this weekend that's true um, we'll talk about that in a minute yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah 30 no would be a lovely one um, nice even number <laughs> and I think Khabib is a guy who could do it I agree I think he's, he's still less phenomenal ego with him yeah. yeah yeah and I don't think I don't know if he's addicted to MMA yeah, as agree. much as other people probably are I agree because I think he's, he loves competition that's mm-hmm. why he's been doing it for so long and that's why he's so good at it but remember I don't know if you remember this because you might have been it might have been just slightly before your time but when Khabib just kept getting injured kept getting injured he was like I might just call it a day. Like, yeah. obviously, this isn't working out for me. I can't stay healthy. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about uh, a retirement. Eventually, they did come back. And I think his father actually um, convinced him to come back. Mm. But it doesn't seem there's any kind of ego there. Yeah, I agree. You know? Um, I'd love if he was the guy to do it. It'd be so cool. Imagine totally you know, say, say he beats GSP oh, in Jesus, the 30th yeah. fight. And he's like, peace That's out, me. guys. Peace out, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, don't yeah. send me location anymore. Yeah. I'm done. I don't care anymore. Yeah, he'd be badass. He was a badass. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Um, any other news that you've seen? I have one piece of news here. Yeah. Well, I have a few. Go on, we'll go with this one. Uh, Darren Till. Um, yeah. It's kind of old news, yeah, but we yeah, haven't talked about it. Darren Till is moving up to middleweight, which a lot of people are happy about. Mm-hmm. But he's fighting Kelvin Gastelum at UFC 244. Man, that guy don't take easy fights, does he? No. Like, you can easily see him go not and three here. Uh-huh. Um, it's a tough matchup. Uh-huh. It's a fucking tough matchup. Um, fair play to him. The man's a gangster, but... Uh, you could argue it's poor matchmaking. I agree. Because I think you can offer him anyone and he's going to say yeah. Like um, I mean, yeah. I mean, the risk and reward for this one is huge for oh, Darren massive, Till. Massive. Huge in both directions. I said to you earlier, I was like, give him Derek Brunson. Yeah. Give him a top 10 guy or top 15 guy. Like, and I think because what happened with Darren Till recently and not that he just lost, that he's mm. taken some bad losses, especially that last one. Yeah, that he was got bad. absolutely flatlined. Um, I think he can get away with that. Yeah. Like, not giving him a bum, but giving him someone that, you know... Yeah. It's good. Solid. Solid. As in, uh, Israel got the uh, Anderson Silva fight off the back of beating Derek Brunson. Mm. So why can't um, Darren Till go fight Derek Brunson and then fight Gastelum? Mm. So... Yeah. Like, I understand from, from Darren Till's perspective what he wants. Yeah. Like, you know, he wants to get back right into 100%. the title picture. If he wins this, he's there. In my opinion, it's not on him to decide who he fights. It's on the UFC to make a smart choice from I don't think it's great matchmaking to be honest I think it's a fucking great fight I'm ex- so excited for it but I think it's poor matchmaking yeah like I'm, let me just pull up the rankings here because I want to see what makes sense so you have uh, yeah Derek Brunson number number 8 Callan Castle number 4 like even like Derek's, every- Derek's even coming off a win yeah he is yeah yeah I think there's plenty of fights there they could have done like even like here's a fun fight Uriah right Hall yeah that's a fun fight yeah just doing that fight yeah. but anyway um, it's happening and Matchmaking or not, I really like the fight. Same. Uh, yeah, you know, 100%. It's a, it's a fucking phenomenal fight. And that division is great. So we'll see what Darren Till can do. I think it's a really, really tough ask. I think it's actually, it might even be a bad matchup for him. Mm. Because uh, Kelvin Gastelum is a good striker. Yeah. He can also wrestle. Yeah. I think it might be a bad matchup yeah, for him. Yeah, and that's what we've seen Darren struggle with. So. Yeah. yeah. And especially and when, when guys can wrestle, it kind of changes the striking game. Yeah. Especially different. in guys' heads, yeah. you know. Um, I don't think if Tyron Woodley wasn't such a good wrestler I don't think he's catching Darren Till sh- with the shots that he did because in your mind for Darren Till I'd say the only thing he was thinking of was I'm the better striker I'm the better striker mm-hmm. this guy's going to try to take me down and that's in his head going in so when you go in and, and basically 
all your focus is on stopping that takedown, the shots open up. Yeah, same and, similar to when Khabib caught McGregor with that yeah, overhand right. Yeah, and that's why Khabib is so um, effective striking as yeah. well because everybody's like, "Fuck, this guy's gonna yeah. take me down," and then bam. He doesn't need to be technically very good with the striking. No, just he just needs you to yeah, worry about the wrestling. Yeah, just throw them shots. So. Sh- throw them shots, bro. Um, do you have an early pick on that? Uh, I think about it more. I think there's a lot of questions. Um, how will the weight affect Darren? How will, how will he uh, benefit from it? I mm. think you have to wonder how much did that last fight together, Kelvin? Yeah. I know we'll have a, a good bit of time off, but we've seen in the past for fights like that, they take yeah, a bit of your soul, man. So do horrible knockouts like he, 100%. Darren Till. There's, Taylor a, there's a lot well. of questions around both fighters. So an early pick, oh, I'd struggle. Yeah. I'd struggle. I'd, I'd say early pick Gastelum. I mean, so early pick Gastelum, but also like he's going to be the favourite going in. Yeah, he will be. You know, absolutely. And for, for a good uh, reason. I'm not sure it'd be a massive favor. I could see him being like four to seven, I think. Okay. Fair enough. Actually, the odds are probably up. It might be, actually. If you can get them there, I will yeah. um, mention something else. Anthony Johnson. Yes. The Rumble. He's saying that he's uh, potentially going to return to the UFC, this time a heavyweight. Um, Anthony Johnson used to fight at 170. Now he's going to fight uh, at a maximum weight at 126. Is it? Kelvin Gaston, yeah. four to seven. You had that up five. before. I actually, honestly, be I swear to God. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just too much of a gambler. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. go on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Anthony Johnson looking for a return. Um, fighting a heavyweight, he's fought there before. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit ropey with Anthony Johnson just because he has a lot of uh, domestic abuse mm. allegations that he hasn't been, like, you know, it, it, you know, actually convicted of or whatever you want to say. Smoke. But smoke. Yeah, smoke. But anyway, fun, fun. <laughs> There's a lot of fun matchups on my heavyweight. Yeah, that there man is. is Fucking, he's like he's gonna have to cut weight now to make heavyweight. I know, yeah. He's two hundred and eighty five pounds. His head is too small for his body as well now. (laughs) I'm not slagging him; it just is. (laughs) He looks like a meme. (laughs) Do you ever see um, Beetlejuice? No, no, no. People will get this. There's a bit in Beetlejuice where uh, he goes to like the place where people go after they die. Not heaven or hell. It's like <laughs> it's something else. Um, they don't this, exist. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's this guy who um, he can like shrink people's heads or body or whatever, and he mm-hmm. just kind of he does the sprinkle on your man's head, and his head goes really tiny. Just reminds me a little bit of Anthony Johnson. Don't a lot of more matchups from a heavyweight. But there um, is, yeah. There's a wider issue there with the whole domestic abuse stuff. There's no governing body for fighters to actually get punished with. That's a fucking much bigger issue. So mm, yeah, and you know, innocent till proven guilty. But it's true again. Yeah, but smoke, smoke, smoke. Uh, did you see? Uh, Kung Lee uh, has a, a court case against the UFC. Oh, this? I've sort of been following this in the states. Yeah, in the uh, states. The states lad. This is one that would interest you if you if you dug deep into yeah. it. But um, essentially, uh, a reporter. Oh, or is this the reporter? Okay, no, I've been following the class action lawsuit against the UFC. And um, this might be different. I'm okay. not sure. Maybe you'll get it here. It, essentially, um. In the the court, obviously, some documents have come this to public one, light, one, yeah. and the revenue that has been paid to a fighter has been released or to fighters, and around twenty percent of the UFC's revenue is apparently going to fighters. Um, if you look in other sports, which we can talk about, if you can actually compare them it's like for like, 50. it's about fifty. Um, strike force before, yeah. uh, actually not strike force, Bellator. Um, in the period that they looked at. A few years ago, I think it was, um, 2011 to 2017, so a good, good few years. Mm-hmm. It was 44%, close to 45%, and strike force was 63%. The thing Jeez, no wonder they got bought out, though. Yeah. <laughs> the thing with that is, as well, of that 20%, it's probably the top 5% are making the majority oh, of yeah, that yeah. fight 20%. Like, everywhere yeah. else. <laughs> so if you listen to a lot of the, the regional Irish fighters that have been signed up by Bellator, they'll tell you they were on better contracts now with Bellator than they were in the UFC. Mm. And that kind of ties in with that 44%, um, as in the money is probably a lot more evenly spread. Obviously, mm. the top guys are making a larger yeah, percentage, yeah. as they should. Um, but it, it's very much um, the 5% are making, 95% of that 20%. Yeah. That's a lot of percentages there, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't like I'm I'm not educated enough on this kind of stuff to like give a, a really good take on it, but I don't think you can say, Oh well, you know, the NFL or NFL teams pay fifty percent, so the UFC should pay fifty percent. I'm not I sure agree. I'm not sure if you can make that argument because yeah. it, the the business is so different. Yeah. But twenty percent does seem low. Um I think other the other documents that have come into play as well are interesting. Um if you look at the tactics employed Oh yeah, like keep, Joe Silva and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and Lorenzo and basically how they can bully fighters into signing contracts. Mm. That, that's that coercion. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm. And that's another issue um, that comes into pay and stuff, as in they can mm. basically just 
choose what they pay yeah. you, even if you're worth more because they have that option at the end of a contract. Yeah. So that's another do issue. Do you know what I always have, right? This is a, a thought that I always have because when I was just a fan of MMA mm-hmm. and I didn't do any anything like this and I didn't actually think about these kind of things. You don't care. I didn't care. You don't. And also, all the stuff that the UFC were doing and the way the UFC runs things, that was to my benefit. Yeah, exactly. It was to my benefit. Exactly. And I wouldn't have changed it at all. I'm not saying that's how I feel now because I think a lot of fighters are, re- are really you now uh-huh. uh, uh, being treated unfairly. But like the fact that the UFC can sign all these fighters and almost have a monopoly, that's good for fans. It yeah. just is. And the fact that the UFC can do all these shows because they're making so much money and they're keeping this such a, a portion of revenue, yeah. that's good for fans. Yeah. But, you know, the poor fighters. What would happen as well is if they were to apportion more, a higher percentage of that money to fighters, we're gonna have to. We're gonna be paying every pay per view yeah, to fund that. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird kind of position. Yeah. That that fans are in that way that you should care that fighters aren't probably being paid their worth. Yeah. But then at the same time, if things changed, maybe the yeah. product isn't quite as good. Yeah. Which Th- is a horrible thing to say. I think what could happen is well, if fighters unionize, but they're too single minded to yeah, unionize. Fair enough. Um, and it's hard to see the benefits of fighters unionizing because then it takes away. Well, if I get to the top. Am I going to get what I should get or am I going to get less than I would now? Mm. And it's there's so many dynamics and facets to this. It's so hard and interesting to follow. Yeah, I think in, I think in theory, a lot of fighters would love like a, a socialist system in MMA. Yeah. But in practice, Conor when McGregor they get there, would. not exactly. And yeah. in practice, when they get there, especially when they get near the top, mm-hmm. it's fucking all capitalism. Yeah. Get that capitalism into yeah. me. Um, so it's a it's a weird one. Have you seen any more news or or think of anything that, that comes to mind? I think off the top of my head now. Um, what did I see when I was out there? What all the fights were on? Um, the fight on Uruguay was on. Mm-hmm. What was that? What was on? <laughs> I, I'm trying to think. Yeah, now, those fights on. It's all a blur because I was I drinking for the that. most. I was. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I watched uh, two forty one in a sports bar in Boston. Great fucking phenomenal pay per view. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time in a sports bar watching it. Probably the best pay- best pay per view of the year. Yeah, it was easily. phenomenal. Um, probably Nick best pay per view since McGregor. What was it? McGregor Mendez. I can't remember what event it was. The one with Rory and Robbie. No, no. Was it? Was it Nate? I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out in a minute. UFC one eighty nine something like that. That anyway. was the one with Rory and Robbie. Was it? Yeah, that was on that card. Yes, yes, that card. That that. Was, mm. Since on, that, boy. since that fucking. Mr. Historian yeah, over there. Cool. Uh, since that card, uh, that was the best card yeah, in my opinion. It was opinion, brilliant. Um, that's all that stands out. Um, there's a lot of blurry stuff in my head at the minute. <laughs> Still recovering from yeah. jet lag and oh, alcohol. Jet lag to bits, man. Yeah. It's a vegetable over the weekend. <laughs> we'll talk a little yeah. bit about um, your antics um, a little bit later mm. on the weird news. Uh, one more thing I, I wanted to talk about uh, on. was, did you see the views on Habib's free fights? Yes. Holy fuck. Yeah. Insane. Jesus Christ. So let me try to find them here. So, standing right now, one week ago, the UFC, they released free fights on their YouTube page. Go check them out because there's some it's good ones there. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Point. Habib Nurmagomedov versus Michael Johnson. It's a week old mm-hmm. in terms of YouTube. 15 million views. That's insane. 15. That's insane. That's McGregor numbers. Yeah, big time. Uh, Aloy Quinta versus Habib Nurmagomedov. Five days old. 8 million views. They just released one hour ago. McGregor, Habib. Oh, let me have a guess. It's it's only an hour old. <coughs> it's only an hour old. Okay, can I have a guess at what it will be by the time we record next week? Yes. So McGregor or Khabib and Johnson's at 18 million? Uh, 8 million. 8 million, okay. And are you at? Uh, f- what did I say? 5 million or something? I'll find it. Do you know what? Fuck it. Are you at 8 million? Oh, 8 million. Oh, yeah. yeah so 15, 15 million. Sorry. 15 yeah, million. Okay. Jesus, I'm fucking yeah. dope. 15 million for Michael Johnson and 8 million for Al, which is five Michael days Michael Johnson's getting 15. 15 million. 30. Ah, oh, 30. Yeah, 30. Oh. Easy. Easy. Because I'm going to watch it about 10 times. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, that's going to add to it. Yeah, Those 10 you know. views is going to bring it up. I'm going to have to um, check what it is next week. Come before me. <laughs> yeah. YouTube does this weird thing where like it doesn't count all the views immediately. Oh, man, I can't wait to watch that fight again. Actually, yeah, uh, right. But they don't count it immediately. But it has 164k views <laughs> in one hour. That like so if, probably 200,000 views. If the Johnson fight does that, in, oh yeah, especially with the media that'll be done in the build up and the promos that'll be shown yeah. at that fight. If you don't, if uh, you don't want to know whether they show the brawl at the end, uh, tune out right now. But I want to know if they show it. Oh, could we put it up. Oh, we definitely. They absolutely do. Oh, they they show <laughs> they are it. They're They are they are showing it. 
Oh, I think they're showing new angles and all. Yep. So uh, they showed the the brawl. So uh, you know all that. You know the worst Twitter's thing that's ever happened in the sport and all this. Yeah. I bet your MMA Twitter is buzzing right now. Oh, we yeah, can't see it. So. I can't wait to get home and see yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Um, one quick scan of Reddit, mm-hmm. just to make sure that we hit every bit of news for the day, and then we shall move on to a fight card that goes down this weekend that I can't wait for. Uh, Tabib Namagamedov. Uh, yeah, we're good to move on. Let's move on to that card. UFC 242. <laughs> Sweet. Tabib versus Poirier. UFC 242, Habib versus Poirier goes down this weekend. It is Habib versus Poirier, in case you didn't know. So we're going to go through the whole main card. We won't talk about the prelims today, but we will pick out our under the radar fight, which is the fight we think is flying under the radar on the prelims, and the one that you should definitely check out if you can't watch the whole thing. But we'll start at the top and go down through the main card. So we're going to start there at that main event. It's a title unification bout. It is the lightweight title, potentially, or I'd say... Definitely the best division in the UFC. It is mm. Habib Nurmagomedov, Dustin Poirier. Initial thoughts. Jesus, so many. Um, <laughs> uh, lots of thoughts. Um, I give Dustin a better... I've been saying this to everyone. I give Dustin a better chance than I gave McGregor. Very good. Um, I agree at this stage. Yeah, I think yeah. I still probably pick Khabib. Mm. A little spoiler there for yeah, the rest yeah, yeah. of it. But I give Dustin... Work, work your way through it. Get yeah. your thoughts and then come back yeah, to that. Yeah, I still give Dustin a far better chance. I think mm. he's improved so much since he fought McGregor. We saw that in the Max fight. He's grown into lightweight massively. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so impressed with him against Max. Um, Khabib is going to do Khabib. Um, I think Dustin... He's not a bad wrestler mm-hmm. at all. Um, got a good camp around him for that yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think if he can withstand a couple of takedowns, land a couple of shots I hope he's learned from the thing we were talking about as well as if if he respects Khabib's stand up as well mm. I think that'll do a lot for him as well yeah um, I agree yeah. Uh, it's a great fight it's um, it, it's a it's a f- funny one because Dustin Poirier I feel like I pick against him a lot uh, I don't know if you feel the same yeah I do I, I feel do. like I'm, I'm looking through all the fights and I've like I've obviously picked him uh, to win against like Jim Miller Pettis and Eddie Alvarez, but like Max Holloway and, and Justin Gaethje, I, I kind of underestimated him there. And it kind of all surrounds his run at f- uh, Featherweight and also that... Big record. That That's what lo- he's remembered yeah, for. Yeah, or, and also that loss, uh, his first loss, I think it was, at Lightweight against Michael Johnson. Mm-hmm. But man, you're right, he improved so much over the years. Like that last performance was... Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Against a really good guy mm-hmm. who, like I, I think Max Holloway... Um, can fight at lightweight. Yep, I, think I, to, I think he needs to fit into that division a bit better. He needs to build up. But we've seen that with Dustin. He needed to grow into it. Exactly, yeah, we've seen it. And we've seen it with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, like McGregor coming up and win the title very quickly, that isn't the rule. It's yeah. an exception. Um, but yeah, I've just been really impressed with Poirier, but still to me, Habib is the man. Yeah, it's hard to pick against him, isn't it's it? It's very hard to pick it's against him. very hard to pick against him. I think the only guy who you could probably pick against him is GSP or someone like that. And even yeah, still. Yeah, still, that's tough. Um, I mean, the odds are... I'll get them up now. Um, the odds are Khabib is... Oh, jeez, I was gone from them because I was looking at other fights. Khabib is 2-9, to nine, like. Wow. That's insane for an MMA fight. You that know, is insane. You never see those prices. Yeah. Like, I would be tempted to put some money on Poirier at those odds. But, like, realistically... I just don't see where he wins this fight. I mean, he's in f- he's a fucking he's a great striker. Mm-hmm. He is a really good striker, and like if this was a straight kickboxing match, yeah, yeah Poirier is is excellent. And I think Khabib's striking is underrated, and um, because he does use his wrestling almost in reverse, and he makes people, um, just by them watching his other fights, mm-hmm. be afraid to strike with him because the takedown's always there. And yeah. if he doesn't get the first takedown, he'll get the fifth takedown attempt. Yeah. And it'll all be chained and he only together. Needs to get one. Yeah, and he gets one, and you're down. And then it's not like I'm gonna hold position. It's he's working. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna take a dominant position, and I'm gonna beat you up. Yeah, I'm gonna beat you up. The thing is, well, I think those odds are fair. Um, yeah, I wouldn't I personally? I'm not Probably. that interested in Kobe or in Dustin at that price. Yeah, I suppose. To be honest, um. Y- I think the odds are fair yeah. based on what we've seen from Khabib and like the, as well Dustin is world class mm. I think Khabib is just elite level I agree um, and we've never really seen Khabib in trouble striking we didn't no. see him we've seen him that one fight you know the one where he, he got he, buzzed he got buzzed but he didn't really um, even against McGregor never looked in trouble on the feet really McGregor landed some decent shots uh, I just don't see where Dustin Poirier can win this fight Um which is a shame because yeah. I like Dustin Poirier, 
But I just don't see how we can stop these takedowns. I don't see see how we can keep range. Like Habib Nurmagomedov is like a magnet to people. Mm-hmm. People are like a magnet to him. Like he, he just swarms them and he's always on top of them. And he's not like, he doesn't leave himself open. He's defensively sound. Yeah. I just don't see it. I, I really don't see it. Um, the only way I could see him winning is like a flash knockout. Yeah, uh, which uh, which can always happen. Very early. Yeah. Um, as in, if he tests, if he hits Khabib harder on the chin than he's ever been hit before, yeah, and Khabib goes, that's the only way I can see it. As in, the longer it goes, Khabib's going to get you down. Looking at um, here here's one, and I I think this this is probably true. If you look at who Khabib has fought recently, and it, I guess even in his whole UFC career, is this the toughest guy? The most resilient guy he's fa- he's faced. Hmm. So good question. Conor McGregor at this stage, I don't think he's the most no, resilient guy. Don't think so. Aloy Quintas is, is one tough motherfucker, and tough. he stayed in there. He looked yeah. good, but then like Edson Barbosa, he can be broken. We've mm-hmm. seen it. Michael Johnson, similar thing, can yeah. be broken. Daryl Harcher, not on his level. Dos Santos, Dos Anjos, sorry, uh, can be broken. So like I think this is the guy who. If Habib takes him down and starts beating the fuck out of him on the floor, Poirier will stay in there until mm-hmm. until he's out. He'll I, stay in there. I'll give you an example of this fight. I don't know if anyone watched the Vasily Lomachenko fight at the weekend. I've seen the highlights. Yeah. Um, Luke Campbell, who he fought, mm. world class. Yeah. Will win a world title, just not against Lomachenko. Yeah. I think it's kind of like that. And if you watch the fight as well, Campbell done himself proud, man. Stayed in there for 12 rounds, got dropped once, but had his own little bits of success. Mm. Nothing major. Um, but looked pretty good against a guy like Lomachenko. Looks looked as good as you can against a guy like Lomachenko. Yeah, I think it's probably more think, the same. Do here. you think something like that happens here? Do you think Poirier loses but loses in in good fashion? I guess I think his stock goes up after this yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, I think so, so. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so too, because he still has plenty left. Yeah. And especially if Habib, who we talked about, if he does retire in the next say two three years. That I really think, opens yeah. up. The I think Poirier has a lot of time left in the yeah. sport. I know Maybe. he's taking some damage, but yeah. So yeah, I'm going to go with Habib. I'm going to say a finish. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to say a finish. Three or four. Three or four. Maybe maybe four. Ground and pound. Just, just too much. Too much pressure. And the referee just has to stop it. Khabib finish is 11 to 2. Oh, well. I like Khabib on points 9 to 5, to be honest. Yeah, I, d- I think that's more likely. Submission is 13 Probably more likely, yeah. Yeah, I like Khabib on points. Yeah. I, I do wonder what Poirier is going to take from that Ally Quinta fight. Mm. Because Al done a good job, you know, defending on takedowns notice. on a day's notice. But he was just, he was so uh, worried about those takedowns that, it, you know, he couldn't even defend strikes at that point. Mm-hmm. Khabib's job was just landing. I don't think Poirier is going to take the same approach, but we'll see. Khabib wanted to make a point in that fight of using his boxing as a... Yeah, he looked good. Mm. Um, to catch that lucky shot on McGregor. Remember that lucky shot that yeah. he got? <laughs> fucking lucky shot um, Paul Felder versus Edson Barbosa in a rematch is in the comment event this is another fun fight what's your thoughts on this one here's a question as well Paul Felder now that he's really kind of settled into this uh, commentary role and it seems like he really enjoys it do you think he's going to be the same fighter um, do you think he's going to be able to do like a Daniel Cormier and stay at the top of the game even though Paul Felder was never like that level athlete but yeah. you know what I mean yeah. stay at the same level or do you think you know, having that distraction might, you know... Um, I think you can argue both ways. I mean, we've heard DC talk about how the level of analysis you need to go into as a commentator helps you as a fighter. Yeah. Um, I think there's that argument, but there's also the distraction argument, as in you just don't have the same time mm. when you're flying all over the world commentating yeah. to train. He did back off, though, didn't he, recently? He has done, yeah. yeah I haven't seen him around. So um, I hope it makes him a better fighter, because mm. a better fighter is only entertaining for us. So Yeah. Um, what do you think? <laughs> It's a hard one. Until it's, you see it's him a fight, hard, it's a hard yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's a very hard one. Like, I thought he looked good in the James Vick fight, and he was commentating at that point. He mm-hmm. was doing the analysis work. So, uh, I don't think it's going to take away too much, but I also don't think it's going to add too much either. I mean, I don't think he's yeah. going to develop so much better than he, no. he is at the moment. I think it just helps you make a game plan better, probably. Yeah, yeah. But um, they fought before. It was a fun fight. It went to a decision, and Barbosa, I think, rightfully won that. A lot of spinning shit in the fight. Um, and I don't see it going too much different. I think Paul Felder was, at the time, he was upset with his performance because he kept going to the well with his spin and stuff. Uh, and I don't think he's going to do that now. But I just think Edson Barbosa is just a better striker. He's quicker. Yeah. Um, and I think Felder, at that time, was probably hungrier than he is now uh, for success. Because he came out and he, he looked good early on and then slowed down because of the body kicks. I think it's going to be a similar-looking fight. I'm going to go with Barbosa. He has some losses. Like, he's 3-1 he's and one, or 1-3 one and three in his last 
uh, four. But like Kevin Lee, Habib, and Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Come on. He has to win out with Dan level. Hooker at high level. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Edson Barbosa. Similar enough, probably another decision. I actually haven't seen the first fight. Um, Maybe. Uh, going to have to watch that one. Yeah, going to have to watch that one. Yeah. I'll watch it for the weekend. Um, yeah, do. It's fun. Fellers had a layoff. I know we fought Vic recently. February, was it? Uh, I think it was Jan. Was it? it was He's Jan. been fairly inactive though, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, Relatively inactive. Yeah, so, Feb, so it was Feb. And then before that, it was, uh, where is it? Like July. Yeah. Two yeah. fights in over a year. Yeah. Eh, it's not the worst. I'm probably going to pick Barbosa. He's been more active. He's looked, or he hasn't been starched. No, I don't think he's declined that yeah. much. He's just fighting good he's guys. He's just fighting high level guys. Yeah. There's no shame in going one and three against the level of guys he's fought. No. So I'll go Barbosa. Next fight is really fun. It's uh, Islam Makashev against Davi Ramos. Going to give you the odds on the Barbosa fight. Oh, give really that please, yeah. 8 to 15 on Barbosa and Felda 11 to 8. Just looking quickly up and down the card at the odds. It's a pretty lopsided card. Is as it, as yeah? Yeah. Say them again. I, I missed it's that. It's a pretty lopsided no, card. The, the odds in this oh, one. Oh, eight to fifteen on Ababosa and eleven mm. to eight on Feldo. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, that kind of that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'll be interested to find what the odds are in this next one because I think this is probably a little bit closer. Uh, Islam Makhachev against Dami, Davi Ramos, two guys who prefer to grapple probably will turn into a striking fight because of that. But I think this is fun. I'm not really sure right now where I'm going with it. Mm-hmm. Um, Davi Ramos is a fairly decent striker, but he, he definitely likes to, to grapple way more. He's an excellent grappler. Islam Makashev, another great grappler. But I'm not sure. I think this might be a striking fight, and if it is a striking fight, I kind of think Makashev uh, will edge him. I just think he has the uh, more tools. Ramos is kind of a one of those you know, big dudes who just throws leather. So I'm going to go with Islam Makashev, uh, but I think this is a close fight. That's really interesting that you think this is a close fight. Because yeah. I've just looked at topology, what the people predict. Yeah. And it's uh, 90% Makachev. Yeah. Yep. I think and it's a close fight. Ramos. And then... That's because Makachev is known. Yeah. That's what you get generally with topology. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, the odds, uh, 2 to 7 on Makachev and Ramos 9 to 4. So you would obviously be slightly interested well, in Ramos at 9 to 4. Yeah, yeah. I would. Like I thought, um, if you go back and watch Makachev's fight against uh, Saryukin, Armin Saryukin, who came in short notice, mm-hmm. I thought he'd done a great job stopping his takedowns. And when he could stop his takedowns, he was competitive there. But I think the difference there is Saryukin was a better striker than Davi Ramos is. So that probably um, mm. was where that worked out. But yeah, I think that's closer than it, than it probably should I be. I probably agree. I'd be yeah. interested in Ramos at 9-4 though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm picking Makachev. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. But yeah. I'd be interested in some 9 4 action now. This one's going to be wide. This one. Cortis Blades yeah. and Abdurahimov. Yeah. I think Cortis Blades is going to be a big favour. Yeah, 3 to 10 and then 11 yeah. to 5 on. How do you pronounce him? Abdurakimov? Oh. Abdurakimov. Abdurahimov. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Close enough, close enough. Um, I think Cortis Blades is a good heavyweight. I think he is. He's solid. He's solid. He's, uh, he's big for the weight class. He's only lost to Francis Ngannou. Mm-hmm. I think he's a solid test for anyone at heavyweight. I agree. Um. And I think, similar to his last fight against Justin Willis, I think it's going to look similar, where he grappled a lot. And Abdurahimov is a better grappler than Justin Willis, like that goes without saying. Sorry, all I ever think of when I hear of Justin Willis is um, his Instagram stuff oh, yeah, with um, yeah, yeah. Tai Juvasa, yeah, Big Titty yeah. Willis. Yeah, Big Titty Willis. <laughs> Whatever happened with Justin Willis? He said he was released and he wasn't. I yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it's going to look similar to that fight. Um, I think Chorus Blades has problems against big heavy hitters like Nganu who's like the biggest heavy hitter uh, I just don't think Abdurahimov is going to really trouble him on the feet I think it's going to be fine there and then in grappling I think Blades is a bigger guy he's more technical and yeah I'm going to go with Curtis Blades I'll say decision but you know heavyweight's yeah, going to easily be 92% there. for um, Jesus. Curtis I'm just going to try and really have a look wide, at Shamil's uh, record here see who he's fought he has some already wins and Andre Olovsky a win yeah but that was before Andrzej Olofsky uh, turned his whole career around again. Again. Yeah. For the seventh time. And it uh, took an L to Derek Lewis, Pete Wald Harris. I mean, yeah. yeah. No one outrageous. Yeah. Yeah, I'll t- obviously I'm taking Curtis as well. There's going to be a night of the underdogs. All the underdogs will win. I mean, if uh, if all the underdogs start winning, lob some money on just Damn, the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Marbeck Tysimov against Diego Ferreira. Excellent opener. 
what an excellent opener. Uh, Tysimov has had problems getting fights because he has problems with his visa getting into the States. That's why now he's getting into uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, it's fine. Diego Ferreira, they're two similar fighters in a way. They're both aggressive strikers. I just think Tysimov is the better aggressive striker. And Ferreira is a great grappler, but he likes to roll a little bit. He likes to strike. And Tysimov can strike on backwards. So if, if he wants to play the counter strike, oh my God, he hits so hard. Do you ever, do you ever see him fight? No. Tysimov, Jesus Christ. He hits hard. Like, he knocks people dead. Okay, I'm going to look this guy up. Um, but yeah, the problem was, he hasn't picked up momentum because he just can't get a visa can't in the States, fights, so yeah. he can't get fights. But um, I think this is very competitive, but I also think that Tysimov can just turn it off like that. Yeah. And I'm going to go Tysimov. I'm going to say he's going to knock him out. He's won the three to, to win, yeah. and then Ferreira is too low. I'm yeah. just going to look and see if the method of victory odds, which they K-O, probably don't. K-O, no, K-O. they do K-O. not. No. Oh, class. Who's that? Call them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, some yeah. Irish company. Some Irish company. Who they are? Fucking boils. Um, yeah, eighty-two percent ties them off. Ties them off. Yeah, it's not surprising. But Freyer is a live dog, in yeah. my opinion. Fifteen and two is not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Under the radar, do you have a pick? Under the radar. Let me get the card up very quickly. I'll give you. I had one there. Main event. <laughs> Oh, the prelim card? Uh, yeah, Joanne yeah. Caldwood and Andrea Lee. Yeah, I like that. I was actually so. looking as well at that Omari Akhmadov and Zach Cummins as well. That's yeah. actually the clo- that's they are both five to six in that fight. I was looking at that one. Mm. So yeah, those two. I'll give you those two. Great stuff. Take take both fights that I wanted. Jesus Christ. Um, Just pick them both. <laughs> your man uh, Z- Zaybara Tukagov, or I can't pronounce his name. Uh, one of the lads that was involved in the brawl is on the card. Of course he is. Can't get uh, a visa, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Al Mohammed is on the card. Yeah, the rest of them are right. Don Madge is on the card. He, uh, I know he was campaigning to get back on the card because his opponent fell through, and oh, yeah. they must have rematched him, I guess. But yeah, do you reckon we're going to see a couple more cards a year in Abu Dhabi? Because this stadium has been purpose built. Has it been yeah. purpose built? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I know the someone in Abu Dhabi, like probably whatever the royal family is, they had like a stake or something in the UFC at one point. They probably. might have sold it when probably. when uh, thing. Anyways, um, not a bad card. Uh, it seems like according to the bookies that there's going to be a lot of mismatches but I think there's some fun fights there grand card I ain't paying for it on BT though yeah I know but it is an early card so uh, you may watch it somewhere maybe in a bar or something yes possibly actually cool Uh, well let's move on and let's go to educating young Sean because I'm very excited to hear his thoughts on the fight that I gave him what four weeks ago or five weeks ago whenever the fuck that was five weeks ago Jesus I can't wait like I know you've been brooding on this one yeah let's move on yeah so this is Educating Young Sean, and I gave him a class fight, and I can't wait to hear his thoughts on it. Um, it was uh, Rory McDonald versus Carlos Conde at UFC 115. Um, if you haven't watched the show before, this is the part of the show where I give Sean a fight. Um, I gift him with a fight almost. He's, you know, he's, he's dying to watch all these fights. Give it to him, he watches it coming back and reviews it, and then uh, I give him another one. So Sean, thoughts on the fight? Um, I have to apologise this week Rob why uh, as you know I was away yeah. and I didn't do my homework while I was away oh, fuck's sake there's too much gambling yeah. and drinking generally I am dying to watch the fights yeah. but um, you I had like five days before you left I was otherwise occupied uh, <laughs> for the last while what did you get up to in between uh, going on holiday and lots of yeah. well preparation for Pre- drinking and gambling really oh, right, yeah. mentally physically you know <laughs> yeah meditating yeah. and all that uh, well then sure we might as well give you that fight for next week yeah, I'll watch yeah. it this week watch it this week we'll get didn't your open fight pass yeah. in America <laughs> yeah. cool well uh, that'll be the fight next week yeah, so, yeah. Sweet. let's move on to uh, Sean's weird news and this is not going to be really weird news we're just going to catch up with Sean yeah. and see what he got up to over in the States. Yeah. One of the things I found really weird in America was once mm. people, uh, one, especially in the casinos in Vegas, once people hear an Irish accent, all they want to talk about is McGregor. Yeah. What's your thoughts on McGregor? Is he going to fight again? When will he fight? What do you think of what he's, what the, the news headlines at the minute? Mm. Um, it was really strange. And they're not, um, one thing I did notice, and you said this to me earlier, they're not just as exposed to everything we hear about McGregor. It's kind of... Um, they're kind of hidden away from everything. A lot of stuff. Mm, yeah. Like, I mean, if you're Irish, you know what we're talking about. There's, like, loads yeah. of everything in the news. But, like, for Americans, it seems like all of that, and it, it is rumours over here as well, mm-hmm. but I think more people have accepted that a lot of the stuff that has been spoke about, not everything, but a lot of stuff that has been spoke about is probably true. Yeah. Whereas in America, it's kind of still, like, 
oh, like I've heard this randomly. Yeah. It's probably not true. Like, yeah. yeah. But it's so small over here. And, you know, everybody yeah. knows everything. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of weird. But yeah, yeah, you basically they're all saying they still love McGregor over there. Yeah, kind of. I was sitting at a at a poker table oh, one yeah. night. Yeah, uh, it wasn't. It was quite early in the in the morning. High at stakes. this time, uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not McGregor level away. Yeah, yeah. It was a one and two dollar limit hold'em table. Oh, lovely! Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty scaldy. Yeah. Um, but a guy heard my accent and he said, uh, "Oh, do you know Conor McGregor?" I said, "I don't know him personally, but mm. I do know him." Um, I know of him. Yeah, I know of him. Mm. I've heard of him. Um, uh, and he said, "What's your thoughts on him?" And uh, I kind of gave my opinion. We'll mm. discuss this later at some point. You have a video coming out. Mm. Um, kind of said what I think is I want to watch him fight but I'm kind of sick of all the bullshit in the media and uh, yeah. he said do you know guys not love him we love him over here mm. I was like was he Irish American no no, American yeah just fully American, American. Yeah. Um, and I've just found that interesting because especially in Dublin where it's a small city everyone knows everyone and yeah. rumours spread very quickly yeah do you know what I've found as well since um, all the stuff happened with him the punch and all that and again I'm bringing out a video and I spoke a lot about this but I found that people are almost hesitant to say that they like him even if they do mm. like everybody that I spoke to either kind of says oh you know he's like uh, if I know they like him or they have been a fan in the past they've yeah. almost been afraid to say yeah I'm still sticking with him mm. which is fair enough because you know what happened was fucking yeah. it was ridiculous like why the fuck is he punching people yeah see it was a lot easier to defend him when he just kind of went a bit mad with the money and when he got to fame because he yeah, wasn't yeah. doing anything like this and he was just kind of being a person or like a an, a bigger version of himself yeah. for the cameras. He wasn't really harming anybody. Yeah, he wasn't really. harming anyone. He was just chatting shit. Yeah. Basically. And, and then, you know, kind of all the stuff started happening, yeah. the dolly and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it's all just kind of piling on each other. Yeah. I feel like the last straw almost. Yeah. And for me with the interview, I think everyone is struggling to actually take the interview and believe him. Yeah. Because like everything he's done for the last year, two years, it's hard to say it. Do you know what as well? Is that I think one of the reasons why, and this is actually not in the video, so this is all Ooh, new stuff. Uh, no, this is not in the video, so it's all new. Um, I just came, came to realise this now, but one thing that I thought with McGregor, why people latched onto him, was that he was so honest. Mm. Like, always honest. Yeah. Especially in his assessment of his own like, performances yeah. and all now. And that just didn't feel like it was honest. Yeah. It felt like he, his manager told him, get out there and mm. say sorry. Because he was the guy like, I'm gonna say sorry to nobody or whatever. Yeah, absolutely fucking no one. Yeah. Whatever the fucking the line was. Yeah, and now he's kind of just apologising because he has to, yeah. which he should have. But it just didn't feel genuine. Mm. You and know? like the incident happened in April, so like know, why yeah. are you only coming out now after the video got released? Yeah, I didn't ever knew it happened in April. Yeah, like ever all of Dublin knew about it. all yeah. of Ireland knew about it in April. In April, yeah, yeah, that night. Yeah, everyone <laughs> knew. Much, yeah. Um, every WhatsApp group was hopping in yeah. Dublin that night. Everyone knew. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but how else uh, How else was the, the whole day? Was it yeah, good? I've seen a few good questions fun. in the comments. Um, Aiden was asking, uh, did <laughs> I con- and he goes, like, did I conquer American women? Yeah. And uh, a gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. It's <laughs> a cop out of ever yeah. heard on. Uh, and then, did I put on a few pounds? Yes, I did put on a few pounds. Mm. Um, I struggle to put on weight, <laughs> and I have mean you've talked about this yeah. a lot. I don't put on weight easy, but them American portions mm. filled me up. You have acclimatised to, yeah. to the potatoes. You yeah. can just eat as many of them as you yeah. want. The, yeah. the American portions are insane. You have to order chips, fries, as a... Freedom fries. You have to order them separately. Mm. You see, in Ireland, you just get f- chips, whatever. Like, if you get a burger, you get chips. Yeah, if yeah. you get a curry, you get chips or something. You have to order fries <laughs> separately <laughs> because you get a fuck-off plate of fries. Like, yeah, whatever. yeah, it's a full it's portion. Like, yeah. yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's uh, the portions over in America are mad. Yeah. These are all mad. I don't know how yeah. I don't know how people like stay in shape over it's there. It's insane. Yeah, it's the place is crazy. Never stops. Vegas, hundred yeah. percent recommended to anybody. The place yeah. is. I had the time of life in Vegas. Mm-hmm. How much did uh, were you down? Uh, I think what I was down was kind of just negligible. It wasn't mental. So Money you were always gonna lose. Yeah. Like yeah, I was kind of happy enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't lose that, and where I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I was happy enough. I had a good yeah. time. So Still, I didn't, he uh, he did conquer the American women. We'll we'll all take that. Um and he put on a few pounds um, which he said he's going to lose can I just so. say as well actually I met up with a listener of the podcast I want to give him a shout out Ledge yeah because uh, on the last one we recorded I said if anyone knows any good places oh, yeah. in New York to, to hit me up and uh, a guy uh, Damien is his name Damo Damo yeah. and uh, he hit me up and he said hey man I'm in Woodlawn and that happened to be where I was actually staying oh. so we met up for a few drinks to watch the Colby and Robbie uh, fight and he wouldn't let me pay for a drink all night because it was on my holidays he Thank was you. an absolute gent and we had a great night we're both oh. scuttled. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was hoping to get to see him again before I went, but it didn't happen. But I did tell him next time he's in Ireland to hit us up and we'll meet him. For sure. Yeah. And uh, next time, 
or the, the only time I'll be in New York, whenever that's going to be. Uh, I'll I'm hit sure you look up after you, yeah. And I'll get you, you yeah. can get me a few points. Yeah. So that's the show. That was fun. Uh, five weeks. We're back. How's it feel? Still hungover? Uh, it feels weird. Yeah, As in, yeah, we were yeah. setting up here today and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Where does this wire go? Yeah, did I just mush <laughs> my brain with alcohol over in America yeah, or am yeah. I just stupid? Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back though. And um, I enjoyed that. I missed it. Um, I, was, I was sick of talking about MMA on my own. Um, so yeah, it was fun. But um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We're going to do some more stuff on the channel as well. We're going to discuss mm. it, converse about it. Um, maybe a new day for the podcast. Maybe some live chats here and there. Maybe some other videos here and there. We'll see. Let us know what you want to see. Yeah, let us know what you want to see. Sean's American mats. Um, <laughs> Nobody yeah. see. I could barely see him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the alcohol talking. Um, but yeah, subscribe, like the video, comment below. 